Hi everyone, welcome to A Fern Between Us, episode 83. And I am one of the four owners, I'm Michelle, and we may or may not get to see Jesse tonight. Uh, he went on a huge hike today and is due back any second now, but he's always trying to get out of this anyway. Anyway, I am uh, excited to talk to you about uh, the wine that I am tasting tonight, something super special. Um, we are just starting into crush. So uh, if Jesse doesn't show up, then we're gonna save the update for uh, what's happening with crush and the first grapes that are coming in and how that's all going in the new press. Super exciting. Uh, for next week, if he joins us, then we'll get to talk about that too, because there's a lot of really fun stuff going on. A lot of people don't realize that we start crush, that's harvest, at uh, the middle part, early part of uh, August, getting some white grapes from the southern part of the state. And then we are on call until beginning of October. So uh, the guys are crushing and making wine anytime the grapes are ready. So it's kind of an exciting time and also a stressful time. And because everything seems to break down, it's a little bit of a headache too. So hopefully we'll get to hear some stories from him tonight. Otherwise, next week. Uh, for tonight, our emotional sanitizer wine tasting is an incredible beautiful wine from Japan. Uh, am I lining this up a little bit right, Denali? Um, yeah, but it's not that close. We can't really see it. Well, you'll have to check out some pictures on uh, my social media because I will be doing a write-up about this. And I'm also featuring it in one of my American Wine Society National Conference classes. Uh, it is incredibly lucky to get to taste a wine from Japan. They are rarely exported, so these are special finds. And I will be posting, of course, how to get your hands on this one. It is really lovely. It is a Muscat Ballier. So that is actually a combination between Muscat Hamburg and Bally. So it is a native grape to Japan. And uh, it is just, it's so beautiful. Of course, being part of that Muscat family, you get lots of the uh, quote unquote grapey uh, nose, but you also get all those aromatics from the Muscat. So you get these really incredible florals and it's almost like having a complex bouquet in your glass. So I, I get some apple blossom and uh, some, almost um, a little violets, uh, definitely a little rose petal. You know, and almost a little dandelion, which is interesting because it gives like almost a, a vegetal tinge to that floral smell. I, I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but it's really, really incredible. And it has such a delicacy and yet it's very complex. And it has these really smooth, kind of big waves of tannin, yet some really strong, firm acidity, but not so firm that it's it's stomping on the wine. And so it is it is a conundrum of a wine. It it just keeps pulling you into the glass. It is so artistic. It's almost like a Pinot Noir without the funk. Um, it, it is just incredible and, uh, it is, it, it is just like a little magic happening. Uh, I believe it retails for $50 in the States. And, um, uh, again, if you want to check back in with me, I'm going to have specifics on where you can buy it, but it is really incredible. And I highly recommend trying Japanese wines whenever you can find them, even though they're hard to find, uh, often you can do a search on Google and, uh, they, they offer a, a really food friendly, interesting version because of that light but complex element. So it goes with all kinds of foods, but as you can imagine, it also would absolutely pair beautifully with fish and sushi 
and any of your kind of interesting noodle dishes and uh, definitely I, I want to play with this I cannot wait to try a bunch of foods with this so mm, just incredible Toshio who uh, is my dear friend who represents this winery sent it uh, out to me and let's see it is the I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation here but Kur Kuramban? Kuramban? Maybe I'm even in the vicinity. That's the name of the winery. <laughs> so I'll follow up with writing that in so that you guys know what I'm saying. Uh, but cheers to that. Exploring new wines, so exciting. Uh, we are supposed to be having a nice little back and forth uh, talking about some of these fun uh, questions that you guys sent in. We did get a, a lot of really interesting questions about hosting people again and not in the way that you would think. It's not COVID related, um, but simply uh, a lot of people are trying to figure out how they want to have people over and some new and different ways to do that. And so um, the first question is, what are your go-to hors d'oeuvres? Because this person's asking for some new ideas. So let's see. The, uh, the go-to seems to be a charcuterie board and it has been probably since 2017. And it is so easy. It's lovely. Angela it's... says no sound. Oh no. Is it plugged in all the way? Oh, shit, no, I made the nope. Was it not? Angela says all of a sudden nothing, so... Hang on! Uh, what if you unplug the... this and then... No, no. And turn it around? Can you hear me now? I've got the update that there's no sound. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. It's back. It's back. Well, what about all the awesome things that I said? And uh, I wonder where I cut out. Did I cut out? Did you hear some of it? Uh, did you hear the description of the Japanese wine? Because that is an important part because that's amazing. I will be linking some more in-depth information. So if I was silent during all of this, <laughs> then crap. Um, hopefully you got some of that and it was just cutting out. I don't know. But, um, anyway, first question, hors d'oeuvres. And uh, so, you know, charcuterie is, I'm sorry, hang on just a second. Jesse yes. has come home, <laughs> he's walked in, and he is completely distracting the shit out of me. Are you going to join? No, I, okay. I look like hell. Okay, <laughs> so we have a special wine that I am talking about right now. If you want some of that, uh, then I can pour you some. Otherwise, you know that we have plenty of wine in the house to imbibe in, but uh, less gestures, more quiet. <laughs> all right, so what a nightmare. I'm doing this all by myself and it's just insane. The wiggling of the camera probably was really fun too. All right, so Charcuterie boards have been the big thing for so many years. I think that's the go-to for everybody. And uh, it is easy, it's delicious, it's super wine friendly, but what else can you do? So one of the things is to do sauteed sliced mushrooms, portobello baby mushrooms and uh, onion and uh, saute that in some olive oil and then just put it in a bowl. Keep it as warm as you can until you set it out. And then toast a baguette. You can either just warm the entire thing and then slice it, or you can do more of a bruschetta and uh, serve it sliced and slightly toasted. 
and then you can just scoop some of this onto the bread slices. It's another really, really, really wine-friendly, incredible way to have something fast and easy, but uh, wine-friendly still. Uh, there's plenty of places in the frozen food section of all kinds of stores that you can get mini quiches. Those are awesome with wine, especially if you're doing a lighter wine, if you're doing white wine, uh, sparkling wine, rosés. Those are really great. If you're gonna go into the reds, make sure that it maybe has some bacon in it or some savory flavors, a little bit more than just the egg. And uh, for a sweet note, there's always warming up some Nutella and drizzling it over berries. Everybody knows strawberry and chocolate is amazing, but try blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries in a mixture, and then just spoon that over the top and it is a really divine, amazing combination with red wine as well. Uh, caprese salad, that's super easy. A lot of people don't think of that. And so, you know, you've just got fresh tomatoes, especially right now, this time of year, and uh, some fresh mozzarella, a few sprigs of basil, you drizzle some olive oil and some balsamic over it, and it is so incredibly tasty. It's super easy too. Uh, of course, there are tons of other ways I can come up with recipes for you guys. If you still want more, I have a long list. But another great one that a lot of people aren't doing anymore but was sort of the standard for a long time is actually to do brie and apple slices, right? Remember that one? Everybody did that. Well, bring it back. So hopefully that helps. Um, and, you know, keep trying some, some new things. There's People are so excited to go out too. It's gonna to be easy to please them with opening a bottle of wine and having any kind of food. <laughs> so the next question is, uh, what's a good back to school wine? Any wine that's in your glass. I don't know if you guys have seen some of these hilarious uh, TikToks or uh, reels where you know the kids go out the school of the door they get on the school bus and mom just pours wine into her coffee mug and now she's happy so um obviously whatever you've got around is great uh whatever makes you happy so maybe if you feel like you need a ce celebration wine what's your favorite and what don't you usually get um i also think it's nice to celebrate with the kids that hey it's a new year and you make something nice for you and your husband. You guys get to have a nice bottle of wine and everybody feels like there's some kind of luxury and special uh, part of going back to school other than just the chalkboard photo of first day, right? All right, next question is how much would wine, how much would, how much would, would a woodchuck chuck? Um, how much wine should I buy for a dinner party? So it depends on how many courses and what you're serving. If you're just doing some light affair, it can really range, uh, you know, it, it, it ranges from, is this before everybody's going out or are there multiple drinks? Uh, as soon as you start getting booze involved, if you're doing margaritas or something like that, you really want to pull back on how much you're serving. Uh, some of the lighter wines, lighter alcohol wines, like a Vino Verde uh, that has a little bit of uh, frizzante in it, uh, gives it a light celebratory kind of uh, fun, but it's not a heavy alcohol. So that also is nice to kind of keep people, you know, from falling down, got to do that. And if it's actually a dinner, generally speaking, you want to at least plan on five glasses per bottle. Uh, you can start to uh, squeeze that out until six if you're going to have lots of courses that are coming out right on top of each other so that your pairings actually work together and people are ready for the next glass on time with the next dish. That's also true the other way so that they're not sitting with an empty glass and the new dish hasn't come out, which then they want to imbibe in that previous wine some more. So uh, then you can do the math of how many people you have versus how many glasses you're pouring. And so generally it's one per course. So if you have a big drinking crowd, like if you invited all the Padbergs and then, you know, it might be a little more. <laughs>
Um, let's see, in the final question that I'm gonna do tonight is, what's the best wine for Netflix and chill nights? Well, this is kind of what we do most of the time. So I would definitely say Vivac is awesome. Gotta go with that. Uh, one, you gotta do a wine that you enjoy drinking on its own instead of just with food. There's lots of wines that are so food friendly because of those higher acids and the structure and the way they transform when you have food with them. But what are the wines that you really enjoy just a glass of on its own, right? So, do you know what Netflix and chill means? What does Netflix Can you and chill hang out in front of the TV? No, Netflix and chill is a hookup date. Oh, well, <laughs> but we've we've taken the original Netflix and chill idea of a date, it's, it's and now for, everybody like, let's, uses let's it. Just watch Netflix, and so you don't have to say, "Let's hook up." Come to my house, we'll hook up. Oh, all right. <laughs> Well, so all of the kids and uh, tired moms or single ladies that are using I want to end Netflix and chill, I guess you're wrong. <laughs> so kids, no hooking up. Um, if you're by yourself, I, <laughs> I guess that's also okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, obviously the Vivac is my go-to. Uh, there's so many options. Uh, my personal favorite right now is the Alianico. Uh, super smooth, really delicious, and I can either choose to snack or not, and I love it. Uh, everything on our list is really tasting fantastic. So, But also, I love a Beaujolais that's chilled, fruity, fun, and bubbly. Oh, there's nothing more lavish than watching a great movie with a bottle of bubbly just on the sofa. So there you have it. Uh, this was a super weird episode. Sorry about that. Lots of crazy weirdness, but um, hopefully you can hear it still. Everything's working a little bit better and uh, give me some feedback so I can fill in the blanks for anything that you missed. Uh, we are getting a Local Heroes Award this weekend on Sunday. We are super honored. Uh, it is an award for doing uh, good food work in New Mexico. So that's amazing. They are uh, giving us a hats off to growing grapes at 6,000 feet and the wonderful wines that we make. So uh, everybody that was part of that in New Mexico and voting, thank you. And we are going to finish up for today. We will see you next week and hopefully it'll be a smoother show and we'll have Jesse here to talk about Crush. Cheers and thank you so much. Cheers everybody.